such complex times that we are living in, the contemporary world today, you know, where more often than not everything appears as its opposite, you know, um, where religion appears as rational common sense, tolerance appears as intolerance. Um, I think sometimes the temptation to be politically incorrect also falls flat on its face, you know, it, it's quite pointless at times. And as Ruchi wrote in his article um, for Kindle magazine this month, that there is political incorrectness, there is political incorrectness, and then there is political incorrectness. So just to you know mark the coordinates of this playing field properly, I just start by asking each one of you, you know, what do you exactly mean by political incorrectness? So none of us is confused about what we are defending and what we are standing opposed to today. I actually think the, uh, the phrase political incorrect or politically incorrect is something which we've imported from, I guess, America. Right? I mean, we don't have a, a sort of homegrown equivalent of it. I think it's a crossfire of different motives, agendas, what is correct today, and what is correct to one person is incorrect. I mean, all you can do, I guess, is to have your own, uh, your own personal rules at some level and hope that uh, they overlap, your, your sense of right and wrong kind of overlaps with enough people and you protest against uh, what you find constricting and wrong or insulting or attacking something that you hold valuable and you also have to figure out ways in which you attack it. I mean, you know, I, I for example, don't make rape jokes. Uh, I just don't, never have, never found, the, never found them funny. Somebody else might find them funny, you know. Um, Americans have this whole thing, you know, when um, uh, when the space shuttle exploded in 1984 or something, Reagan was the prime president at that point, and one of the uh, people who died, one of the astronauts who died, was a school teacher. So there was a joke going around at that point that, oh, where, where, where would you find her? Where would you find uh, a school teacher called something something? So this is all over Florida, which means it smashed into bits and scattered all over the, where the shuttle was launched. I mean, I kind of vaguely admired the ability of people to make that kind of a joke in the face of a national tragedy or a, a, a human tragedy. But on the other hand, I didn't find it particularly funny. I was like, haha, okay. You know, on the other hand, uh, we are having imposed upon us a whole series of uh, sort of almost tacit, unspoken understanding. Including this vague idea that you, know, you can't insult political leaders, you can't make fun of them. Um, Narendra Modi apparently goes around insisting that he be called uh, Modi ji or Pradhan Mantri ji. You cannot call him Prime Minister, you cannot call him Narendra Bhai, you cannot call him anything but what he stipulates you call him. I mean, frankly, that respect has to come from people naturally. And if it doesn't come, you can't impose it. But uh, suddenly you saw around the election, that everybody was referring to Modi or Narendra Modi suddenly started referring to him as Modi ji. And I was like, where does this ji creep in from? The ji crept in from the BJP's um, action team going in and telling, listen, you better start paying this guy some respect because he's going to be Prime Minister and we'll come after you after that. So, I mean, that is happening on the one side. On the other side, uh, when Rushdie is banned from coming to Jaipur, Ashok Gehlot says, yeah, I understand the anger of the of, of the of the Muslims of this. You know, so everybody understands and uses the anger or uses the outrage of whoever it is to add to their own power. So if Mahmoud Abbas says, "Ami Salman Rushdie ka aste de," she doesn't give a damn about satanic verses or Salman Rushdie. She knows that she has to pander to a certain vote bank, and so without having read uh, uh, any a single of Rushdie's books and had any opinion on it earlier, uh, she pronounces on the top of her head. So you have to understand why people are doing this. You have to understand uh, what are the agendas that are at play. You have to understand. And so the, this for me is, is a battleground. The word political inc politically incorrect is a red rag at one level. At another level, it's a, it's a term I question. 